Hello, hello, hello. How you doing, sweetie? How everybody doing? Blessings, 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 blessings. Can I get everybody to share? Hey, Nestine. Can I, hey, Martha, how you doing? Can I get you to share? Um, today we're going to do part two, talking about this inside war, talking about the war on the inside of us. How many know that you know what? That this is an invisible war. And if you don't know anything, blessings, blessings. And if you're not paying attention, you'll be getting whooped up. And you don't even know that you're getting whooped up. Um, I want to start off talking about how um, I shared a post this week uh, earlier today. And it was talking about how the people in the world don't believe in demonic spirits. It's just funny to me how... People, you turn on the television, people are looking at scary movies. They're looking at horror movies. They're watching paranormal activity. But they don't believe in the supernatural when it's pertaining to the things of God. And it's a sad thing that people have a fascination with scary movies. They have a fascination with the darkness. But they don't recognize that they have dark. They don't, they don't realize that they have demonic spirits on the inside of them. And this is what we're going to talk about today. Talking about the war on the inside because even I want you to turn your Bibles to uh, Ecclesiastes the third chapter because here I wrote down here that the people in the world have no idea how to operate in the kingdom of God and you got some people in the church they don't even understand that this is an invisible war this is a war that we have to pay attention to our thoughts blessings woman of God we have to pay attention to our words we have to pay attention to our actions because we got to understand that people are more sensitive to the demonic than they are the spiritual God that's why I believe we don't see a lot of supernatural in our churches because we know about demons we know about these evil spirits but we don't know how to discern them when the spirits are in us we got to begin to understand that God want to do a work on the inside of us but he can't do a work if we don't recognize who we fight that's why the Bible said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places. In other words, you are fighting an invisible fight. You, How do you know that you got a demonic spirit? You can tell how you act. You can tell where your thoughts are. That's an indication of what spirit is on the inside of you. If you battle with a lot of negative thoughts, you got to understand that you're battling with demonic spirits. We got to understand that Jesus, the Bible say in John 1, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. What is that telling you? That the spirit of God is a spirit. In other words on the opposite. So when I hear positive word, when I hear the word of God, that tells me that I'm dealing with the spirit of God. But when I'm dealing with demonic thoughts, that's telling me that I'm dealing with demonic spirits. And so if I don't know that there's a war between two natures on the inside of me, I, the devil is banking on you thinking that it's just you. You got to understand the way that you feel is not just you. Can I tell you when, some, when you wake up in the morning and you feeling sad, you feeling hopeless, you feeling depressed, you got to understand that that's not you. You got to begin to understand that you got aches and pains and you know that you haven't did anything. You got to know that you up under spiritual attack. And this is why we got to understand when we dealing with insecurities, we dealing with hurt, pain, grief, and we, whatever that you dealt with and you do not voice it and if you don't have anybody to talk to guess what you're internalizing these things and when you're internalizing these things guess what demonic spirits want to talk and they want to talk through you so when we turn our bibles to ecclesiastes the third chapter i want you to look at verse 18 he says i thought about how people act god often puts them to the test to show them how much they are like 
animals or how much they are like beasts. When you look at the book of Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, the Bible says that without, without God, man is like a beast. We got to begin to be honest with ourselves. When we don't live, when we don't uh, uh, have a regular study habit of the word of God, and we're not allowing the word of God to deal with us, can I tell you that you are stirring up that beast for nature? What do you mean when you say beast? A beast is, you got to understand, a beast is an animal. A beast is something that cannot be tamed. A beast is something, blessed woman of God, a beast is something that is sensual. It's based on its feelings. It's based on its emotions. If you look at an animal, an animal only goes by its, 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 its basic instinct. Of, in other words, it goes by what it wants. And so when we're talking about man is like a beast, it's when you're living your life based on your feelings. you basing your life based on what you think, what you feel, and no matter what anybody else says, says you go based on what you feel that's an indication that you're living in that beast nature when you got some people that they they um they don't have any control even of their sexual drive. Can I tell you that that's a beast nature? You got to understand when you're wild and you're unruly, when you don't have any discipline, when the Spirit of God can't control you, when the Spirit of God don't make you uh, arrest yourself, you got to understand that you are going by that beast nature and you got to understand that this is an invisible war. It says here in the scripture, he said, I've thought about how people act. God often puts them to the test. See, God put people to the test because can I be for real with you? I have experienced people, the more that you try to tell them right, the more that they want to do wrong, the more that you try to help them, the more that they seem to try to turn and go the opposite direction. This is why I have seen people that will look you in your face and they will tell you a lie. When you ask them, are they fine? And they say, yeah, I'm fine. When really something else is going on in their mind, but they won't tell you. This is where people will manipulate you to make you think, one thing when they really going in another direction. You got to begin to understand that when you're dealing with people that operating in that beast nature, this is people that they want only what they want. They don't care about your feelings. They don't care about your emotions. The only thing they care about is it's good enough for me. They're not concerned about your feelings being hurt or who they damaged. The only thing that they're concerned about is them. You got to understand these people will cry, they will perform, they will entertain, and they will pollute whatever they got to pollute just to get their way. And you may say, why is this going on? This is going on even if you look on TV, if you look on the news, you got people lying, you got these politicians lying, you got these people saying all kind of things just to get a vote, just to get whatever that they want. And seeing God is showing us the nature of the beast. He, because we got to understand, we sometimes we as the people, People. We have voted these people in these positions, and God is showing America our heart. He's showing us what we want, what we want, and we don't want what he wants. See, God is trying to get us to do inventory in our life because he's saying you need to deal with this inside battle. Because can I tell you, because some of us, we got problems with God. We got issues with God, and God's saying that we got to begin to understand the war is already going on. This is why sometimes when you try to correct people and you say that's wrong, you shouldn't cuss nobody out or you shouldn't do them like that when people will turn on you because they're not morally correct they don't have any morals you got to begin to understand that you're dealing with a beast nature and seeing that's a war going on in that person because they're not used to nobody telling them the truth they're not used to nobody telling them no and so when you got a people even when you got some children you they parents tell them something and they go do it anyway when you got a supervisor telling you as a co-worker don't do that. I need you to leave early. But you do what you want to do. That's that beast nature. That's the war going on the inside. And God's saying that I'm not pleased with that. Because can I tell you, when we don't read our Bible and we just live our life based off how we feel, you are feeding that beast for nature. Because see, you got you can be you can be a nice person. You can help the homeless. You can give them clothes. You can do all kind of good deeds. But the Bible is telling us with this scripture. 
God saying, without me showing you your issues, without me showing you where you have fallen short, he said, without me, man is like a beast. It has nothing to do with you personally. It's, it's just showing you your nature. And this is where God is showing us that we got to begin to be honest with ourselves because this is the inside job because we are sit at home and we think negative. We want to run people over. We want to give people a hard time. We want to hurt people who hurt us. We'll sit back and we think about the negative that people have done to us. We'll get on the phone and we'll gossip. We'll talk about people. We'll make people cry. We'll begin to poke our fingers at other people's issues. Not understanding God saying that's a war going on on the inside of you because if you got the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is going to convict you. The Holy Spirit is going to let you know you shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be talking about your brother or sister. Even when we hear the word of God, sometimes the word of God just go over people's head because their heart is so hard. And God said, that's an indication. There's a war going on, but we some people don't even recognize that it's a war because they're so used to living out of that beast for nature. And seeing God is saying that we got to begin to understand if you going to, the Bible says, if you're going to be a part of the kingdom, you got to love your neighbor as yourself. And we got to be honest with ourselves. No, I don't love my neighbor like myself. No, because I want a revenge. I want to get them back because they hurt me because I want them to feel the way that they made me to feel. See, God is trying to show us that you got to take inventory over your thoughts. You got to begin to be honest with yourself because can I tell you, sometimes we operate in the spirit of escape because we don't want to hear the truth. Can I tell you that there's a war going on when you don't want to hear the truth. Some people will click on and hear what I'm talking about and they turn off. You know why? Because that beast for nature don't want to hear the truth because those unclean spirits on the inside, they don't want to be cast out. They don't want you to be convicted. Anytime you hear the word of God, you got to know that we should be convicted. Not only is it to encourage us, but it's to show us where we have fallen short. It's to show us where we need to come up. And we got to begin to understand that we're living in a dangerous time. We living in a sensitive time. This is not the time to be on vacation in your mind. This this is not the time to think that I'm okay just because my pastor said I'm okay because I checked the box that I went to church. I checked the box that I paid my tithes, but you're not allowing the word to deal with you. And seeing this is why God said there's a war going on because you is a war going on in the spirit realm, but we don't realize that it's a war because if things is not going on the way that I wanted to go, in other words, now you begin to now come into agreement with that beast for nature. The Bible says, how can two walk together unless they agree? So when you begin to agree with these negative thoughts, can I tell you, when you begin to agree to do wrong, the Bible talk about even in Genesis, that even when the serpent was talking to Adam and Eve, when they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it opened them up to a, a dimension of learning how to be evil. It's easy that even when you look at a baby, a baby will touch a stove. If you tell that baby not to touch the stove, a baby even know to wait till you leave before they try. Why? Because they know the difference between what's right and wrong because they know you told them not to do it, but that nature within them want to do it anyway. And God said that we got to begin. He told us that we need to begin to meditate on the word day and night. And then we begin to say, God, why have you forsaken me? God, why have you answered my prayers? When you got to really be honest with yourself, have you you allowed that word? Have you put the word into your heart? Have you fed your spiritual man the word of God? Because if you have not fed your spiritual man the word of God, guess what? You got to be honest with yourself. You can't expect God to do all this stuff when we when we really don't want to do what we're supposed to do. This is why he said that without me, he said without me, without God, man is like a beast. It said God will put us to the test. See, it says here in the scripture, God will put you into a situation to see what you're going to do. God will put you in the midst of an argument to see are you going to bring peace. God will cause you to, to get in the midst of a situation to see will you stand up for righteousness or will you go in with the crowd. See God will put us in even in the midst on the job when you know people are picking sides but you know the popular people over here and the unpopular people over here God will put you to the test because he want to show you your nature. See we got to begin to understand that we're being tested. When you don't hear God saying anything you got to understand you're being tested in the natural when you taking the test do the teacher be quiet or do the teacher talk the teacher is quiet when you're testing you got to understand that when God is testing us 
He's quiet. He's showing us our heart. He's showing us where we really are. And see, he's showing us that we have gotten to the place where we want what we want. Can I tell you, it's a dangerous thing to want what you want. Because when you want what you want, guess what? You're going to get out of the will of God. Because God would never give us everything that we want. He said, I would give you the desires of your heart. But he won't give you everything you want. In 1 John 2 and 16, he said, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh... In other words, the lust of what this body wants, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. We got to begin to understand when your body and your eyes and your flesh want what it wants, you got to understand you are feeding that fleshly nature. You are feeding the demonic spirits on the inside of you. And this is where God is trying to show us that as we as a people, we got to learn to know the Word of God because the Word of God is going to check us. The Word of God is going to show us, well, you know you ignoring your husband. You know you ignoring your wife. You know that that's not right. So when you hold the unforgiveness in your heart, when you go to that word, that word is going to convict you and say you forgive your neighbor seven times seven. But see, when we don't read the word of God, let's be honest. It's easy to hold those things in our heart. It's easy to go on to be in the household and don't speak to your spouse because guess what? I'm mad. I'm going to withhold myself from sexual intercourse. I'm going to punish you. I'm going to let you see what you on did to me. See, a lot of times we have been operating in witchcraft, even us ladies. We have operated in that spirit of Jezebel, and sometimes people in the church, well, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody in the house happy. You know what? They was giving women permission to operate in the spirit of Jezebel because God never told us to operate like that in the spirit realm, but see, for the simple fact, because I want what I want. Can I tell you, you got some parents, if you don't fold up them clothes the way that I want you to do, if you don't fold up them socks the way that I want you to do, if you don't have the colors matching, see, now that's being overly excessive. We got to begin to understand that that's another control mechanism. That's another war going on on the inside of you. And God said that you got to begin to understand, I'm putting you to the test because I'm looking to see, are you going to treat your children the way that I treat you? I love you even when you don't do what you're supposed to be doing. I'm going to see, are you going to love your neighbor? Because I love you when you don't listen to me. I love you. I even supply your needs even when you haven't been faithful but a lot of times because we don't want to hear what God is saying and when we hear the truth we'll buck up against people we will fight up against them we'll try to look at people as our enemy because as they begin to tell us the truth about ourselves we begin to get upset we begin to get mad no I don't want to hear that don't give me no prayer don't give me no preaching I don't want to hear nothing about that because you hear a lot of people when they're hearing the truth, they get offended. And you got to understand the reason why we're getting offended, because it's agitating those demons on the inside of us. We got to be honest, because the Bible says, deliverance is the children's bread. Deliverance is for us. But you got the people in the world that they they begin to uh they begin to fast and pray to worship the devil, but we as saints, we have gotten so accustomed with our demons. We got so accustomed with our attitude. We got we so used to murdering people. We so used to talking about people. We so used to gossiping. We so used to hurting people feelings. And I'm going to curse you out. And I'm going to sing on the choir. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to preach. I'm going to teach. And see, and this is what God is saying. There's a war going on. And then when we get to church and then somebody is preaching the truth, you say, how dare you? And then you'll look at them and you'll roll your eyes. Come on, because I have seen people do it to me plenty of times. And God said, you got to understand that they are not fighting up against you, but they're fighting against me. There's a war going on even in our churches. There's a war going on even in our minds because sometimes we want to do right but we find ourselves doing wrong. You know why? Because Paul said it's the sin that's within me. We got to be honest and say you know what? I got some sin in me. I got some problems that you know what? That I know that I can't let this man go. It's in my mind. I got to be in this extra relationship even though I know I'm married but even though I can't let it go. See that's a war going on when you got people that you know I know I shouldn't be drinking I know I shouldn't be smoking drugs but you know what but I want to teach the gospel I want to do right but I got this war going on on the inside of me but instead of you going to God we try to hide it people are battling with pornography they're battling with masturbation and lust and perversion but they don't want to tell nobody in the church because they see the people in the church going through the same thing they're doing and God 
God saying, where is my sons and daughters? He said, don't you know I have given you my power? I have given you my strength. He said, I have given you dominion over demonic spirits, but we don't understand that there's a war going on because I don't want to hear about that. I don't want to turn my plate. I can't go that long without eating. I hear saints making up excuses. I even hear saints that, can you pray for me? And I ask them, what scripture are you standing on? I don't have a scripture. Well, how can you say that you're looking for God to do something when you don't even have his word? To, you don't even use his word to back it up what you believe in him for. And see, and this is where we have gotten to a place where we have gotten less lackadaisical, where we have gotten lazy. And this is where God was showing. He said that we don't got to a place where God has put us to the test. It says in Ecclesiastes, the third, the 18 chapter, the third chapter, verse 18, say God often put them to the test to show them how much they are like animals see God is showing us the real us a lot of times but see instead of us seeing that God is trying to show us ourselves some people now oh this just me I just cuss folks out I just keep it 100 oh I just keep it real no you're not keeping it real no you're not keeping it 100 God is showing you where you are out of his will God is showing you that you're warring up against him and it's where God will put somebody in your life to help you but because you don't want to listen to the truth you will make that person your enemy you will begin to turn up against the very help that God has called for you see God said we got to stop internalizing what we feel. A lot of times we won't even go get any counseling. Can I tell you, if you're going to be delivered, you need to get with a voice of truth. You need to get with somebody who you can be honest with, somebody who's not going to judge you, somebody who's going to give you godly counsel. You can be in a support group. You can be with a minister, or you can go and get some counseling. But we need to get with somebody who's going to tell us the truth about us because we need to begin to see why are you trying to protect your fears? Why are you trying to protect your hurts? Instead of you trying to go through and allowing this person to help you navigate what decision that you made that was right and what you made that was wrong, but instead, we don't want to tell anybody. We want to hide behind our images. We want to hide behind who we think that we are. And see, we have gotten to the place that we have built up these flesh. We have built up ourselves, making ourselves thinking that we're somebody that we're really not. And God saying that you have been wounded, you have been hurt, and we we don't even want to talk about these issues. Not understanding that's what caused the war. When you read the book James 4, he said, where do the wars and arguments come from? They say it comes from the things that's within you. See these conversations and arguments and disappointments that we have had where people have let us down. And God said, I'm trying to let you know by you internalizing your feelings by you not telling the truth how you really feel. Some people are in relationships and you can't even be yourself. You can't even be honest and tell them, no, I don't even like going to this restaurant. No, I don't even like the outfit that you bought me. No, I don't even like that we have to go over here. We won't even be honest. You got some kids can't even talk to their parents because they've been internalizing their feelings. And then God said that we got to begin to pay attention how people act. You got to pay attention when your children don't want to talk to you. You got to understand that they are internalizing some things. When you're in a marriage and y'all are not talking to each other, when you can begin to fake the phone in front of everybody and act like you so in love but behind closed doors you don't like each other you don't sleep in the same room you got some eternal life issues that you need to address we got to understand time is not going to heal it we're going to have to open up our mouths and we're going to have to begin to talk and we're going to have to listen because God is saying that if you're going to be delivered if you're going to deal with this inside battle on the inside of you the Bible says the truth is going to make you free Can I tell you, if you're going to deal with the truth, you got to prepare yourself. You're going to hear some things you don't like. You're going to feel some things you don't like. Can I tell you, even when people begin to tell you the truth, you got to begin to pay attention how you act. When you find yourself getting upset, when you find yourself want to run away, that's those spirits manifesting on the inside of you because there's a war going on because they understand if I hear the truth, it's going to make them demonic spirits in you. It's going to 
make you nauseated. It's going to make you want to run. It's going to want to make you get out of place because you said, I feel sick. Because that's the word. The word of God is going to cleanse you. The word of God is going to renew you. And God is saying that this is why we got to begin to deal with ourselves. You got to deal with that beast nature. But can I tell you, a beast is numb. You can get so ruly and so mean and so evil that you only want to pick fights with people. See, this is why the enemy wants you to stay at a place like this. He don't want you to get around places where you're hearing the truth because when you begin to hear the truth, he understand that that truth is going to cause him to be exposed. And see, the enemy don't want to be exposed in this hour. Can I tell you, I have heard people tell me that they want me to help them, but the moment that Holy Spirit start dealing with the real them, it's so easy to run away. You know why it's easy to run away? But because when you don't want to hear the truth about yourself, when you don't want to deal with you, it's easy. And see, and this is where God has said, uh-uh, we got to begin to deal with this. Turn your Bibles to 1 Timothy, the, um, the fourth chapter. When you look at 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter, it says, Now the Spirit expressively says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith. They will give heed to deceiving spirits. In other words, people will, dis- people will leave truth. People will leave truth because they don't like how they feel. They don't like because they've been exposed. They don't like because they've been caught in a lie. They don't like because they've been caught in hypocrisy. They don't like because of what they've been doing and you telling them the truth and the simple fact that they don't want to hear the truth and then they will get angry with you and then now they will run away because they said that I want God to help me. They said I want God to deliver me but now for the simple fact now that it's been exposed they want to run. And see and this is where he say people will depart from the faith because they don't want to deal with their truth. People will run away from a church that's teaching them the truth to go sit at a church where they not convicted. You got to begin to check yourself if you can sit somewhere and all they do is tell you how good you are and they never deal with you. They never deal with your attitude. They never deal with how you are, your hurt, your pains and you got to understand you're in the wrong place because the word of God is like a two-edged sword it's going to cut and I don't know about you when a sword cut it hurts and God said because I need to show you that without me you are going to be an animal because can I tell you the people in the world, they're, rele- they're releasing things in the atmosphere. they putting things, people getting murdered because they want to desensitize us. They want us to get to a place where you see people murder and it's like it's just coming. You see children getting shot. You see people being molested. You see all kind of wickedness being done and your heart just get hot because all you do is see evil stuff. See, the enemy is doing this on purpose. And see, this is why, because he he's trying to drive out the God out of you. The spirit of God out of you. Because when you got the spirit of God in you, he's going to deal with you and tell you that you got to pray. He's going to deal with you and tell you pray for these children. Pray for these politicians. Pray what's going on in the nation. Because a lot of times we will gossip. A lot of times we'll murmur and we'll complain. And God said, "Uh uh-uh. If you got my spirit in you, I'm going to give you something to do. I'm going to give you an assignment. I'm going to give you a mandate. And you got a lot of people, they want to preach and teach the word but they don't want to do the assignment of prayer. How many know that God is looking for some intercessors? He's looking for some prayer warriors because he got to understand that if he, if we don't pray it, God can't do it. He's looking for some people that's going to push his will on the earth. He's looking for people that's going to speak the word. But if I'm too busy trying to preach a message, if I'm too busy trying to be seen, trying to gather up an audience, can I tell you I'm missing God? And God said, you don't understand. You are in a war. The enemy got you so focused on your fleshly needs, you don't understand that the enemy is coming in to take over. This is why he said here, he said, people of many are departing from the faith. They're giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. He said they speak in lies and hypocrisy. And they come in the church saying God is good. They know in the scripture. But when they go home, it's totally opposite of what they said in church. People are living for sauce. And God said... 
This is not it. He said in verse 2, having their own conscience. That means your conscience. That means a God conscience. When you know the difference between what's good and evil, but it said their conscience will be sealed with a hot iron. In other words, people's morals are being cut off. People will sit there and watch somebody hurt somebody's feelings and won't say anything. You got to understand, morals are being cut. But children are losing their lives. People are losing their jobs. People are being mistreated. And when we won't do anything, that's an indication. Our conscience is being seared. Our, in other words, to know the difference between good and evil. Our morals, it don't even bother us. When things don't bother you and you see all this stuff going on and it don't make you change. It doesn't make you pray. It doesn't make you fast. You got to begin to understand that you are pulling to the dem- you're pulling to the demonic realm. You're pulling to the world in nature. And can I tell you, the enemy is banking on you to pull to that nature. Because when you pull to that world in nature, guess what? Only thing you're going to do is talk and gossip. You're going to lay down. You're going to watch TV. You're going to act like you don't have nothing to do. Because you feel like, well, people going to be people. No, 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 no. In the kingdom of God, the Bible said when the kingdom suffer violence, we take it by force. That's when we begin to open up our mouth. Because the Bible say in Ezekiel, he said, I find one intercessor, I spare the city. And you got to begin to understand that even though you may seem like you're the only one, but God said, I got intercessors and prayer warriors all over this world. But when we begin to pray, we unite with them in the realm of the spirit. And God said, this is why we got to begin to check ourselves. How come things don't bother you anymore? How come you're not, you're, you don't care when you see people on the street? Elder Martin was just telling us that even on Piggly Wiggly, a man was laying in the street. A man was laying out there on the sidewalk. People just walking by. See, when your morals just see somebody walking by and this man sleep like he's sleeping on a bed and he just sitting out there on the hot concrete and ain't nobody saying nothing. You got to understand God is showing us that our morals is being cut. That our morals are being, our conscience is being seared. You got to understand understand when you see people being hungry and it don't bother you to say let me go take this stuff out of my refrigerator let me go clean my closet but when we see people struggling and it does not deal with your heart God said there's a war going on on the inside of you but the enemy is winning the war because you are cold your heart your heart is hard because you don't feel compelled to help you got to understand are you your brother's keeper are you your sister's keeper You should be compelled that even when we go places and you see these people, these young people don't have no God. We, you tell me your Holy Ghost don't tell you to to give somebody an encouraging word that God loves them, begin to encourage their heart. But we are getting church and we want to try to encourage another believer. We want to try to show off and let them know we can prophesy. But when you got a generation of people doing all kind of things that don't know no God, but we'll go to the store and we want say nothing. We won't invite them to church. We won't sit up there and tell them God loves them. We won't say nothing. You got to understand that's an indication that your conscience have been seared. And God said, I'm not pleased with this. He said, I'm not pleased. Let's look at James the third chapter. When you look at James the third chapter, let's look at verse 14. He said, but if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your heart, don't brag and deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come from above, but it's earthly, unspiritual, it's demonic. For where envy and selfish ambition exists, there is disorder in every kind of evil. So when you're around people that's selfish, you always bragging about what you got and it's all about you, your family, your children, your marriage, and you ain't thinking about nobody else. God say that's earthly. He said it's unspiritual and it's demonic because in Matthew 6 and 33, it said once you seek first the kingdom of God, the kingdom is God's ways of doing things. God's ways of helping people. He said that when you have done it to the least of them, you 
have done it to me. You got to begin to understand. He said, for where envy and selfishness, ambition exists, there is disorder and every kind of evil. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peace, loving, gentle, compliant, full of mercy, good fruits, without favoritism and hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who cultivate peace. You got to understand when there's a war going on, it's so easy for you to bring division. Are you the troublemaker in the family? Are you the troublemaker in the church? Are you the troublemaker on the job? Are you always the one telling what somebody else said, but you don't tell what you said? Can I tell you and that you are throw a rock and hide your hand? Can I tell you that that's a demonic nature? That, that you you allowing those demonic spirits to lead and guide you. But when you don't want to get in that word. And you don't want to let the spirit of God to show you your error. Can I tell you that's a spirit of pride. When we don't have a taste for the word of God. When we don't even want to allow it to deal with us. That's an indication that you're dealing with that antichrist spirit. And God is saying I'm letting you know that this is not of me. How is it that I live within you. But you don't want to give me your your word to give me back my word how is it that you say you love me but you don't know what my word says you got to begin to understand how can you fight the enemy we got so many saints being whooped up talking about the battlefield in their mind they about to go crazy they feel like they about to lose their house they cause they about to they don't have any money but when you ask them about are you praying are you reading the word they say no Well, how can you fight this devil when you don't know the word? How can you fight the devil when the word is not on the inside of you? See, this is where the enemy, he wants you to stay like this. Because as long as we're like this, you ain't no threat to him. When you don't know the scriptures, the devil is going to beat you. He's going to strip you down. Every negative word you speak out of your mouth, you better believe he's going to bring it to pass. The Bible say in Proverbs 18 and 21, death and life lies in the power of your tongue. So when you're speaking negative out of your mouth, you got to understand the devil is going to send them demonic spirits to bring it to pass. The devil is going to orchestrate hardship. He's going to orchestrate frustration. He's going to orchestrate disappointment because he wants you to be at a place where there's a war going on within you and you don't do anything about it. It's a sad thing that you're in the midst of a war, but you don't have any weapons. And that's what it is when you don't have a word. You shooting a gun, but you don't have no bullets. You sitting up here asking somebody else, can you shoot Can you shoot my gun for me? That's what we like when every time, can you pray for me? Can you pray for me? But you don't know how to pray for yourself. See, we don't understand that we have become handicapped. We have become handicapped in the realm of the spirit because I that's too much. Why I got to read so much? Why I got to fast? Because the Bible say Jesus couldn't cast out. De- he said some devils come out by, by fasting and prayer. Some situation that you are in, just the simple fact you're not fasting. God said I can't do nothing because I need you to become stronger in me. I need you to eat my word. I need you to allow this word to change you th- the way that you think. I need this word to change the way that you talk. A lot of times we want to still be in the world, but you want God to bless you. God said, no, I'm a jealous lover. Either you're going to love him and hate me or hate me and love him. You got to begin to understand that this is a war of the natures. He said, if you be lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth because God is looking for us to either choose him or to choose the enemy. He even giving you the choice. But you got to understand that God said that we already win, but you got to know how to speak what word pertaining to whatever situation that you're dealing with. Because guess what? If I'm sitting up here in pain and I'm up here saying, Lord, you said that you're my provider. That don't even go with that. No, I need to call on Jehovah Rapha. Lord, release your healing virtue. So if I need to be, if, if I need God to deliver me by me saying, oh God, be my peace. 
No, I need to call on the God that is going to deliver me. Lord, I need you to wash me. Lord, I need you to cleanse me. I renounce and denounce. You got to begin to know what to say. But you got a lot of saints. We're trying to fight, but you have not gotten trained. You have not got equipped. You're trying to go out too early when you have not trained for the battle. Even in the natural, soldiers just don't go to war. They have to train. They have to go in the field, and they have to train to know how to fight. And they do this throughout their whole career. But you got saints, saints of God. We want to sit up here and try to fight a devil, telling the devil what your pastor said, telling the, the devil what you heard somebody else say, but you don't know the word yourself. That's an inside. See, you don't understand. That's a sabotage. We are sabotaging ourselves because we don't know what to say. We don't know what to do. Half of the time, you don't even realize you're in a spiritual battle. Your body is a being afflicted. Every time you hear the word of God, you begin to get sick. The enemy is fighting you because he said, I don't want you to know the truth. I don't want you to leave me. I don't want you to kick me out. So he will send warfare in your mind, warfare in your body because in other words, he want to stop you so you will stop hearing the word. The moment you cut the word off, the moment that you go and start watching TV, the pain stop. And this is what God is trying to show us. We got to get rid of the bitterness. We got to get rid of the envy. We got to get rid of being selfish. Because can I tell you, we can be selfish and we can feel like we got a right. I have been dealing with people that felt like they had a right to tell people marriages. I have dealt with people that felt like they got a right to hurt other people because they don't like the people. You got to understand what's in a person's mind that will make you think it's okay for you to hurt another individual because you don't like them. See, that's what God is trying to show us. That's where that beast nature come in at. That's where this selfishness coming at. He said, this is why you can be evil because you know you being selfish, but you choose not to change. You choose not to allow the Holy Spirit to deal with you. You choose not to address your issues. You choose not to hear the truth. And so when you choose not to hear it, you're telling God you are coming into agreement what the things, what the devil has planned for your life. Can I tell you that even the enemy even is pack is picking fights even in dreams you see yourself fighting in dreams and you sit up there but I don't understand that's when you got to begin to counsel that you got to understand you seeing snakes you seeing people trying to hurt you that's an indication that you're dealing with some invisible enemies around you and it's time for you to go to war in prayer not for you to try to fight people in the natural it's time for you to turn down your plate and say God I need you to help me God, I've been in a daze. I've been in, I've been in, I've been in fantasy. I've been looking at everything else except dealing with my issue. And God saying, that was time to prepare yourself for war. Let's look at another scripture here. I got down. Let's look at Jude. When you look at Jude, because I'm going to show you here in the word of God. That the enemy, he want us to chase after what we want. He want us to chase after what your flesh desire. When you look at Jude, you got to begin to understand right here. Let's look at the 16th verse. When you look at Jude, the 16th verse, he said, these men are complainers. Who look long and hard to find faults of other men. See, when you when you got a war going on with you, you try to look at other people so you won't deal with yourself. When you find yourself always trying to find fault in everybody else, you seeing what they not doing with their children. You seeing how they not doing their job. You seeing how the pastor should be doing this and they should be doing that. He said, you got to begin to understand, this is what the enemy is using you to pick a war with somebody else because now you standing from the outside and you looking, finding fault with other people because you don't want to deal with you. You trying to escape your reality. You trying to escape your fear. 
feelings. You don't want to, you want to act like it's not there. He said here, these men are complainers. When you find people that always complain about other people, he said they are led by their own lustful desires like fools down the path of destruction. In other words, they think they the only one that know what's right. They feel like they the only one that know the truth, how I feel. And you know what? They hurt me, but you don't care how you hurt other people. You don't care how you pick the fight with other people. You don't care how you talk against other people's children. Now you want to get mad because somebody is talking about your children, but you forgot the spiritual law. You reap what you sow. We got to begin to understand what you sow. You're going to reap. You got to understand these demonic spirit. They know what you said because we're in a voice activated kingdom. So when you begin to speak negative, you got to understand those demonic spirits, they know how to find you because they know your voice. They know your voice print. They know how they, they hear what you saying. And see, a lot of times we think that we going to get away and not understand that God is trying to get us to turn back and to repent. God trying to get us to get to a place that we repent for our evil desires. That we repent. He said, and we stop trying to do our own thing. You in the kingdom of God, but you trying to tell God how to do it. You trying to tell God, but I want this man. And God saying, they're no good for you. You trying to tell God, I want this job. And God said, that's not the job I want you to have. But you started trying to do what you want to do. See, this is an indication here that you're fighting up against truth. You're fighting up against the king. You got to understand when you try to fight up against the king, can I tell you that you're not going to win? Can I tell you you're going to be frustrated trying to fight the creator? And guess what the Bible say in Romans 1? God said he left them over to a reprobate mind. In other words, God said, I'm going to let you do what you think that you're doing. It's wrong, but I'm going to let you do it because you. I have given you signs. I have given you dreams. I have had prophets to talk to you. But instead of you trying to turn from your wicked ways, you want to continue to do what you want to do. And God saying, this is not pleasing to me. Why do you think we got so many ailments in our bodies? Do you not know that when you have ailments, you got unforgiveness, you got a uh, rebellion, you got disobedience. Do you not know it brings cancer? Do, do you not know that spirit of rejection? It, 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 it opens up the door to lupus. These dem- Not all the time, but can I tell you, if you don't, if you got a lot of unresolved issues in your life, can I tell you this is how ailments come in your life? Because I told you the demons, they need a place to stay. They want to display themselves in our bodies. This This is why if you don't deal with your issues, if you don't cast these devils out, if you don't say, Lord, forgive me for being evil, forgive me for how I've been thinking, forgive me for how I've been conversating. You got to begin to understand this is why we see what we see in our life. You wonder why you see depression, why you see hopelessness. Talking negative. Every time somebody says, oh, it's beautiful outside. It looks like it's going to rain to me. Every time somebody says something, you find something negative. You got to begin to understand those demonic spirits will use you because they saying they don't know. They don't understand the laws of the kingdom. They don't understand how this thing is operating. And so this is why when you saw the lady going back to, I was talking about when I first started, how the, the pastor, that's a doctor, and she was talking about these sexual demons. And the man from CNN, they was laughing and talking about, what you mean demons? And, 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 and they trying to make fun of the lady, not understanding that these demons are real. And so when we have these negative conversations, and we talking crazy and twisted out our mouths, we have no idea that we're dealing with demonic spirits. And God is saying, this is why you got to deal with your inside. You got to begin to examine yourself. You got to begin to to pay attention to your thoughts. You got to begin to pay attention. What words are you speaking out of your mouth? Why don't you feel any conviction? How come you have no desire for the word of God? That letting you know that something is going on on the inside of you. A lot of times when we always talking negative, when we always point fingers, you got to understand God is trying to show you something is going on with you. And this is why he was telling them back at the word of Jude. Let's go to Jude. Look at verse 16. He said, they are arrogant 
liars who only want to get ahead of others. And see, and this is what he's saying. These people will, are liars. When you're dealing with yourself, the, God has told you that you're healed, but you still keep professing that you sick. You still keep professing, I feel this, I feel that. You don't want to change your mind according to the kingdom. You keep talking like a worldly person. Well, I still feel sick. Well, God has told you that you're wealthy, but I'm broke. Ain't no money in my bank account. I don't feel this. See, God said, see, you rather believe a liar. You will listen to somebody to tell you a lie, but when you hear somebody giving you truth, you don't want to hear it because if it's going to cost you work, you don't want it. You don't want to change the way that you think. The Bible says in Romans 12, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. He said, we can't be conformed like the world. We got to stop thinking like the world thinks. The world responds to what they feel. When you're in the kingdom of God, you can't respond to what you feel. You got to speak what the king says. And God said, you got to wage war against the enemy. That's why this is called a war. Because whatever your body feels, you're speaking what God's word says about the situation and not based on what you feel. Well, I feel like I'm about to lose my mind. No, you got to say, I renounce and denounce every spirit of insanity. I break covenant with you. I cast you out of my mind. By his stripes, I am the healer of the Lord. I have the mind of Christ. So you got to begin to speak the word of God. But if you don't know the word of God, you're going to lose this battle. And this is why we see so many do all somebody to pray for you. Always looking for somebody to give you. You always looking for somebody to give you scripture. You got the internet. You got a Bible. You don't for yourself. You want somebody to do all the work for you. And then when you hear something you don't like, you'll get mad at somebody. That's an indication you got a war going on on the inside of you. This is where you got, that's it, elder. You got to wage war on the enemy. Because there's a war going on on the inside of you. There's an enemy going on the inside of you. Can I tell you, sometimes we will get so used to bondage. We'll get so used to being broke. We'll get so used to being sick. We won't even say nothing. When you find yourself where you don't want to pray, you don't want to read your Bible, only thing you want to do is watch TV and do other stuff, you are escaping. You are escaping and the enemy is whooping you. He's beating you down. Because you got to get in this word. If you're going to see the fruit of you're going to see victory, he didn't tell us it was going to be easy. He just said, I need you to speak my word. He said, if you got the faith the size of a mustard seed, you got to begin to understand God is looking for you to contend. The Bible said contend for the faith. In other words, even when you feel like you're losing, you still got to keep fighting. Even though I hope against hope, even when it looks like I don't have anybody to help me, even when it looks like I'm by myself, even when it looks like I'm sick, I'm still going to profess I'm the healed of the Lord. Even when it feels like I'm losing my mind, this mind belongs to the Lord. That's how you war. You are waging war because you're not agreeing with what you feel. You're not agreeing with what you see. And God said, it's time for my people to wake up. It's time for my people to stop believing the lies. Can I tell you that the enemy is a deceiver? Can I tell you he's a liar? Can I tell you he's a manipulator? And he's banking on you to be moved by your feelings. He's banking on you just to go by what you perceived. Can I tell you in Romans 8, our flesh is not saved. There have been times my flesh told me I was fine. But God been on showed me in a dream. I was in the middle of a war. And I had to get up and start praying. This is why I'm telling you, we can't be so comfortable. And, 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 and you know, you know something just ain't right, but it seems peaceful. No, you got to begin to get in a place of prayer. Make time and put the word and feed your spirit man. Because when you feed your spirit man, you're going to regurgitate that word and speak it. But you, if you ain't putting nothing in, you can't get nothing out. This is why when people going through, people want to commit suicide. People feel like, I, I, just, I just need somebody to help me. I just don't know what to do do. You don't know what's going on because you're not getting in the word of God to, to educate yourself how to fight in this invisible kingdom. We got to begin to people of God. We got to stop being lazy. We got to begin to understand here that the devil hates your guts. We fight him 
Oh, that's just too much, Apostle. That's too much about fasting and praying. Then you telling me to get up and pray early in the morning. That's just too much. You got to understand you are a soldier. If you are a soldier, how dare you tell the soldier how to fight? How dare you tell the commander how to fight? The commander have given you the weapons. The commander have given you everything that you need. He told you to praise me. You just went through something bad and God say, start praising me. It don't make sense. I don't feel like it. See, that's the problem. Because you're in a war, but because it, it ain't the way that you want it to be. You going based on your feelings and God say, praise me. The simple fact somebody hurt your feelings. The simple fact they said something to you. God say, praise me. God say, trust in me with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. How can you be in this kingdom? And the currency is faith. You got to have faith. In other words, it's going to look like you're defeated. It's going to look like you're outnumbered. Can I tell you, it may be 15 people against you. And it may just be you by yourself. But you got to begin to understand that you're not by yourself. He says, I am for you. Who in the world can be against you? You got to begin to understand. Say, God, open up my eyes. Let me see that I got angels in the room with me. God, let me see that I'm not here by myself. See, this is why you got to know the word, because when you know the word, the Bible says in Psalms 112, when my enemies come up against me, I will not be shaken. I will not be moved. You got to know how to stand on the word. You got to know and say, I grab a hold of the horns of the altar. I will not let you go until you bless me. God, I thank you for bringing me through this. I will not run. I will not lose my mind. This is where you got to begin to speak the word of God. The Bible says the anointing is what destroys yokes. People of God, we got to understand that there's a war going on. There is a war going on. Yes, is God going to bless us in the midst of it? Yes. But I'm sounding the alarm. Wake up. The simple fact we are, we're calm when we're hurting somebody. When you don't even feel conviction, that's an indication to let you know something is going wrong with you. When people are looking at you and they can lie and they know that they hurt you. Oh, no, I didn't see you. Oh, I'm sorry, but they still got a smirk on their face. He's letting you know you're dealing with somebody who ain't right. We got to stop being so naive. We got to stop being so, so, so believing. When God is trying to show you people true colors, you got to begin to understand the closer you get to God, the more he will show you people would dislike you. You may say, how would they dislike me? Because they can smell the aroma on the inside of you. You can tell when somebody got a prayer life. You can tell when they know how to pray. Because you can just tell when they talk. Because they, they, they got a relationship. You begin to feel that anointing on the inside of them. And you got to understand, the enemy is banking on you to, to, to just think, if I just go to church, God just going to bless me. Can I tell you, this is bigger than church. Because if we don't pray, I'm telling you, you're not going to be prepared for this battle that we're about to face. We're going to face some things on this earth that's not pretty. But this is the time for us to get our hearts together. This is our time to get into that place of prayer. So when Holy Spirit wakes you up in the middle of the night, when Holy Spirit tell you to get up and pray, when he tell you to walk in your children's room, it may not seem normal to your natural man, but say, Lord, teach me how to be led by your spirit. Show me what to do. Show me how to be tentative to your voice and the voice of a stranger I would not follow. You got to begin to ask the Lord, show me which direction to go. Show me those who are for me and those those who are not for me. You got to begin to ask him, Lord, I need you. I need you to lead and guide me. Lord, I need you to destroy anything in me that's not of you. Lord, I turn on the enemy. I turn on the enemy on the inside of me. This is where God give me an appetite for your word. Give me an appetite for prayer. Father, I thank you, Lord. You got to begin to prophesy. You got to understand you don't have to be a prophet to prophesy. Begin to say, you know, I love the word of God. I hear God speaking to me. Open up your mouth and say, God, show me me. A lot of times we want God to deal blessings. We want God to deal with the people and God really want to deal with you. Why do God want to deal with us? 
because he lives in you. He lives in you. So if your mind is chaotic, how can you hear what father is saying to you? This is why he said you got to deal with this evil stuff that we doing. We got to deal with why we dislike one another. Why we don't want to help one another. Why we won't pray for one another. Why won't we uh, 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 try to save souls. Why don't we evangelize. I ain't no evangelist. If you are a believer. You should be evangelizing. Time is running short. God said the earth is moaning and groaning. For the sons of God to manifest. How can the earth tell the sons of God. Our voice. They can hear the voice of the father. Can I tell you when you're living a life that's submitted to God, the earth will hear the voice of God. That's why Jesus cursed the fig tree because the fig tree heard his voice, but the fig tree refused to obey. And that's why Jesus cursed it. He's letting us know your voice is activated. Your voice activates heaven. Even when it looks like ain't nothing going on, you better know in the spiritual realm, when you praying, your voice is activating angels to go fight on your behalf. The Bible say in Daniel 10, the angels say, I came in response of your words. See, we got to know the laws. Your words are powerful. Your words are strong. Your words got the ability to bring life to a dead situation. Your words got the ability to bring death to situations that are alive. That's why God said, I need you to speak. I need you to go into a place of prayer. I need you to contend with me. He said, give me no rest. I need you to do the work of an evangelist. I told you. People got to get saved because everybody will not make it from COVID. But if you get them saved, at least they got a place in the kingdom. We got to do the work of the Lord. Understand this is harvest time. Ask the Lord, show me how you want me to minister. Show me who you want me to minister to. Start getting in this word. Allowing him to get the desires of the Lord back into your life. Because see, we got No, no, no. We got to move back to the kingdom. We got to move back to what God is. And can I tell you, I'm not saying don't do what you want to do, but put God's stuff first. Do what he tell you to do first. Then go to do, do, do your stuff are neglecting the kingdom. People are dying. Somebody won't wake up in the morning. I'm telling you, people are getting saved even on social media. People are dealing with stuff. We got to open up our mouths and begin to display the power of God. God is depending on you. You may not have a pulpit, but you got a Facebook. You got a mouth. Let's do the work of an evangelist. Let's get healed. Get healed so you can do the work of an evangelist. There's no reason why we should not be doing anything. It's time for us to wage war, saints. And the first person that you got to deal with is deal with the war on the inside of you. Stop trying to pick a fight with other people and you have not dealt with the spirit that's on the inside of you. As I close out of this week on Deliver Me From Me, let's deal with this inside battle. Deal with this inside war that's going on on the inside of you. Share this message with somebody who need help. Message it to them. Let them know, hey, I, I was just thinking about you. It's time for us to do the work. Amen? So catch me uh, Saturday morning at 3 a.m. We're going to be praying, about uh, praying, dealing with this inside war. Praying, believing God to deliver us. Believing God to shut the mouth of the enemy. To shut the enemy voice. So be delivered. Meet me at 3 a.m. Saturday. And we're going to be praying, believing God to deal with these wars to deal with these arguments to deal with these lies that's going on on the inside of us so i will see you all saturday or either next thursday 6 15 i'm a apostle elisa you all be blessed